Hello. <clears throat> Today I'm going to show you how to use Excel's regression function from the data analysis tool pack uh, to solve simple and multiple regression uh, problems. In this problem here, we have um, uh, three variables, uh, gross, uh, weekly uh, revenue in thousands of dollars is given, uh, television advertising in thousands of dollars is given, and newspaper advertising is given. We'd like to use column B and C, those two variables, as uh, independent variables, as predictors, to estimate or to predict um, weekly gross revenues. Let's first use the regression function of Excel um, <clears throat> and use television ads as the independent or X variable to estimate um, Y, the gross weekly revenues. To do so, uh, we go to the data uh, tab. Data analysis would be um, the add-in that you would have to have activated in order for you to use this. Click on it. Among the options, go to Regression and click OK. It's important to keep the X and Y uh, variables uh, apart. Um, the Y variable is the one that is to be predicted. Therefore, in the input Y range, I will highlight and include uh, using a left mouse key uh, all that range of values. Notice that I have included the column heading in that range. Cell A1 is included. Now I will position my mouse in the second field where the X range is to be included. Let's use television ads as the independent variable. Again, notice that cell B1 has been included in the range. Therefore, I have to check off this labels box. For the output window, I'm going to position my mouse, uh, the, the cursor here. And you can click any um, cell so that the results would be dumped in there. I will go ahead and click uh, cell I1. Residuals um, plots uh, can be included, but I'm not going to include them for now. I'm, we're going to concentrate only on uh, the results of regression. At this point, click OK, and the results will be included in this um, window right here. Uh, let's uh, understand what's going on. Um, television advertising in thousands of dollars is our independent variable. Because the column heading was included when I selected that field, uh, that all of that uh, label is here, and it's um, our independent variable. B sub 1 is, um, uh, or the slope for the line, is 1.6 for this problem. And the intercept is 88.6. The equation can be written as y hat, or the predicted, estimated, um, average value of y of uh, gross uh, weekly revenues, is equal to 88.6, and I'm rounding here, plus 1.6, again, I'm rounding, times x1 where x1 really is add dollars in thousands of dollars. The multiple r is um, the correlation coefficient between x and y, between television ads and uh, gross weekly revenues, and it's 0.81 rounded. The r squared is point is that number squared, which is 0 0.8078 squared, and that yields 6, 0.65. So this is correlation coefficient, 
and the r squared is called the coefficient of determination using the terminology from your book. The correlation coefficient is an index. You studied it back in chapter 3 when we studied numerical summaries. Um, and it cannot be, it should not be expressed as a percentage. However, the r squared value is, um, uh, can be expressed as a percentage. And essentially we're saying that 65% of um, the variation in weekly revenues can be explained by this regression equation. And since we have only one independent variable, uh, we can say that 65% of the variation in weekly gross revenues can be explained by advertising dollars. The adjusted R squared is, um, excuse that interruption, I had somebody knock on my door, so I had to answer it. All right. Um, the adjusted R-squared is used only for multiple regression. There is a, a small section in your book in Chapter 13 where multiple regression is um, covered, that it talks about uh, adjusting the R-squared value when you're working with multiple independent variables. So this value right here should be used for multiple regression only, therefore I will not interpret it right now. Um, standard error is um, uh, is the square root of um, the sums of squared error divided by n minus 2, divided by degrees of freedom. So when you take SSE and divide it by n minus 2 and take square root of it, you get this number. I will type the formula out, is equal to square root of SSE, oh, sums of squared residual, divided by, uh, in this case we have uh, the number of observations are 8, so 8 minus 2 is 6, divided by 6, okay, I don't know what for me, what error I had, but, um, I, this is the uh, uh, standard error. Okay, um, what else can we talk about? Here are the sums of squares. Um, here is the SSR, or sums of squared due to regression. This one is SSE. Um, that's um, sums of squared error. And the total uh, SST is the summation of these two, which is 25.5. Um, we have eight observations here in this study. It's very important to make sure that uh, when you run your analysis that the number of observations is exactly what it should be, uh, and you don't end up with fewer observations. If that happens, that's generally as a result of not using that labels box correctly. Um, the number of observations is always this total plus one. That one that you add here is essentially uh, used up for the y for the dependent variable that has been used in the analysis. So you always end up with your number of observations always equals this um, total uh, number of degrees of freedom plus one and that equals the number of observations. The significance, um, F, uh, this is, for those of you who have had statistics in the past, this is the um, significance level uh, for the study. Generally, we want this number to be less than 0.05 in most statistical applications. When this happens, and in this case, this test is significant, essentially what we're saying is that this um, um, equation that we have found, this regression equation or this regression model that we have found is statistically significant, meaning that only 1% or if I round this number right here, 2%, only 2% of the time you can expect these results to be as a result of chance causes. Um, so 
essentially the balance of it is that there is a high uh, probability that you really do have these results um, and this relationship between uh, X and Y um, as a result of um, the real uh, association between the two variables. So if this number is high, um, you can have confidence in your results that you can use this uh, regression um, equation with confidence. It is possible that this number would be very low, but your R-squared value would not be very high. Remember the R-squared va value or the coefficient of determination is uh, a measure of goodness of the fit of the model. So if this number is, um, is small, uh, then that means that um, X is not uh, doing a good job of predicting uh, Y. Uh, so it's possible that this number would be low, as you can see it is here, so it's a good significant test, but our relationship is not very strong and our model is not a very, uh, you know, the, the goodness of fit is not ver very high. And the reason why I say that is because that this means that 65% of the variation in uh, revenues can be explained by advertising dollars. However, however that means 35% of um, the variation in revenues is explained by other variables. Hence, we use multiple regression, and the next video that I make for you is going to address that and how we can use newspaper advertising um, to uh, see whether our, our uh, estimation of revenues, weekly gross revenues, will be improved any if we use two independent variables. Thank you for your attention.